Hi, and welcome to this video. If the work you are doing is in any way related to information technology, you must have heard about two great products from Atlassian, Jira and Confluence. But it might not always be clear what they should be used for, how their functionality overlaps, if at all, and how they complement each other. In this video, I will walk you through each application's main concepts and features and show you how to connect them to work together. After you complete watching, you will fully understand what Jira is, what Confluence is, what they do individually, and how they complement each other when connected. Enjoy the video. Jira and Confluence are two different products from Atlassian. They have very distinct functionality and serve a different purpose. Either one can be successfully used without the other, but they also complement each other in many ways. For that reason, sometimes they are viewed as one product, or even more extreme, as the same product. In this video, we will review and clarify what Confluence should be used for, what Jira should be used for, and how they work together. Put simply, Jira is the software platform for organizing work and teams doing the work around tasks and projects. Jira is very good at managing the scope of the work, priorities and task assignments. It is mostly used in software development, but it is in no way limited to that. Confluence, on the other hand, is also a software platform, but with a different purpose. It is used to manage online content such as reference documentation, knowledge base, wikis, meeting minutes, reports, or similar. It efficiently enables multiple users to collaborate and contribute to the same content, and it provides full version control and access control. Confluence and Jira do not need each other to do all the things I just mentioned. However, when connected, they can do much more, and they tremendously improve the efficiency of the teams working on projects. For instance, someone viewing a project report in Confluence can have real-time information about the progress of project tasks managed in Jira. It goes the other way as well. Someone working on a development task in Jira can view a solution design document created and managed in Confluence without switching between two applications. Let's spend the next few minutes reviewing the main Jira features. Then we will do the same with Confluence. After that, we will look into how they work together. In Jira, work tasks are defined using Jira issues. There are several predefined issue types, such as epics, stories, tasks, and bugs. Jira is very agile-centric, and that is where these specific task types are coming from. However, custom types can be defined as well. Issues are organized in projects. Out of the box, Jira provides many ready-to-use project templates, such as Scrum or Kanban for software projects, and quite a few for business projects as well, for example, document approval or recruitment. Issues are processed from creation to completion through predefined and customizable workflows. At any point in time, the status of an issue can be conveniently viewed on project boards that are also customizable. Issues can be assigned to team members and work effort can be estimated. Many other issue attributes such as priority and dependencies can be set and the full history of issues is preserved. Users who are in any way associated with an issue can be notified anytime something with the issue is changed. Many project reports are available out of the box. A lot of them are related to Scrum concepts such as velocity, burndown, and burnup chart for project, release, or sprint, while others are fairly generic like time tracking or user workload. Those are the main Jira features, and let's look into Confluence now. Similar how Jira is using the issue as a building blocks for everything, Confluence is using Page as the smallest unit of functionality. Confluence users create and read content that is created and organized in pages. Users creating content have at their disposal full-featured text formatting tools, including different styles, colors, font sizes, etc. Images can be embedded, sized, and aligned. A large number of macros are available to do many different things, including creating a table of content, image galleries, charts, embedding documents from other applications, and many more. 
Confluence pages fully support multiple users working concurrently on the same content. They provide a reliable publishing workflow with fully functional versioning, allowing content creators complete control of what and when is being published and the ability to revert any changes quickly. Pages can be created starting from a blank page or from numerous templates such as meeting note, business plan, employee handbook, and many more. Confluence comes with more than 80 templates and custom ones can also be created. Users collaborate during content creation with contextual comments embedded in the text and by getting alerts when, get cont when content is changed. Users who are reading documents in Confluence can find the content they need in several ways. If they know where content is located, they can browse to it through a customizable site structure. If they don't know where to look, they can rely on browsing content by topic of interest defined by label content. For example, looking through all marketing documents or all finance documents. Or they can rely on advanced search functionality, which will scan through a defined set of documents and look for specific search terms. Confluence organizes pages in something called spaces, which can be perceived as a file cabinets or drawers where related content is stored in the same drawer with controlled access of who can read and who can edit those documents. Examples of spaces are documentation for a specific project or a help desk knowledge base. Spaces can be created from predefined blueprints, which include a set of templates, but also some helpful pages are created when space is created. For example, knowledge base space and documentation space come with different home pages, each one optimized for their specific purpose. While project space comes with already created integration with Jira and provides a direct view of the Jira tickets. That brings us to a point where we want to review how Jira and Confluence work together. At the start of the video, I mentioned that this integration can be set from either Jira or Confluence and that it can be customized to best suit a particular need so that there is no single way how it should be done. Here are a couple of common examples to demonstrate the concepts and of course they can be modified for a specific case. Jira provides a place in the left side navigation to connect to a Confluence space. Once connected, a full structure of connected space is displayed in this Jira screen and pages can be browsed and new pages can be created. Users can also search across both Jira and Confluence and see in search results both Confluence pages and Jira issues that match search terms. For additional convenience, Jira and Confluence share the same user authentication system, which allows users to seamlessly transfer between screens belonging to different applications. An example of a situation when this integration is beneficial is when Confluence is used to create and manage project documentation, such as solution design or functional requirements for a project managed in Jira. Users who spend the most time working from Jira tasks don't have to leave Jira to access this solution design or functional requirements. This is how information stored in Confluence can be viewed from Jira. On the opposite side, it is quite common to include Jira reports or specific sets of Jira issues, for example, top priority tasks in a Confluence page. This is easily achieved using a couple of macros that come with Confluence, where you just need to specify Jira project and specific report or a filter, and in no time, up-to-date information originating in Jira becomes available to users who work in Confluence. Once the connection is established on the Confluence side, it becomes possible to create Jira issues directly from Confluence. But there is also a simpler way to create this connection, and that is the creation of project space. During the space setup, Jira project needs to be specified and that will initiate and complete the creation of all necessary connections. This concludes the overview of Jira and Confluence, their features, what each one is aiming to accomplish, and a couple of common scenarios where tighter integration between the two comes into play. To summarize the main points, Jira and Confluence are two different applications with different purposes and features. 
each one can be successfully used without the other, but there are many cases when connecting them to work together creates a lot of benefits.